Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Question 9. A rectangular sheet of aluminium is used to make a cylindrical can of radius or centimetres and height 10 centimetres as shown. Below. The aluminium does not overlap in the finished can. Show that or the radius of the cylinder is three centimeters. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, when you open out a cylinder, so the net of a cylinder, okay, and I'd encourage you to try this with um, an old toilet roll when all the, all the tissue is gone, just cut it down here with the scissors and you'll see that it opens out into a, into a rectangle. OK, so the net of a cylinder is a rectangle. OK, its height becomes this dimension here. And in fact, the circumference of the circle of the cylinder at the top becomes this length here. OK, so open up a toilet roll, convince yourself of that. OK, um, because if you do that once, you tend not to forget the net of a cylinder then. OK, so this is is a can. So it's got a lid at the top and a lid at the bottom. OK, um, so cylinders can be open ended in that they've got no top or bottom. They could have just got a base and no top or, of course, it could be closed like this one. So show that or the radius of the cylinder is three. OK, um, well, I'm not going to get it from here because there's too many white gaps and I've no way of knowing what the white gaps are. So always remember with a circle that your radius can actually go any way at all. OK, they're all radiuses of that circle. So as long as it goes from the center out to the edge of the circle, well, as long as it's straight, it doesn't matter where I draw it. OK, so why am I telling you that? Well, I'm looking down here and can you see I have no gaps? OK, and I know what length this is. So that's 16. So all of this here adds up to 16. OK, so that's how I think I'm going to get the radius um, from this circle. So let me drop a line down there. OK, and, and as you know, that's not the radius, but that's the diameter because it's equal to twice the radius. OK, so diameter is equal to two by the radius, two or I'll call it. OK, so if this is 16. OK, let's subtract off the 10. That is the, I suppose, the height of the, the cylinder and I get six. So that's equal now to the diameter. Uh, therefore, six divided by two is equal to three centimeters, which is the radius. OK. So the white gaps, no good to you going this way, even well, we didn't know it anyway. Um, so you had to go the whole way. Find the distance Y. Give your answer correct to the nearest centimetre. OK, so like I was saying, once you open it out, um, the, the cylinder, OK, you'll see that the circumference, which is literally just the length of the edge there, becomes the this dimension of your rectangle. OK, so Y equals circumference of the circle or cylinder OK, let's go to um, area and volume. Where are we? OK, and you can see here I have two formulas. I have A for area. And I have L for the length or the circumference. So 2 pi r is my circumference of the circle, which is all the outside. So 2, 3 is a 6 pi. Give your answer correct to the nearest centimetre. So I'm getting 18.85 centimetres for that. So it's 19 centimetres. OK. 
Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, actually break it out and see it uh, to convince yourself of it. Find the area in centimetres of the waste aluminium after the top, the bottom and the side of the cylindrical can have been removed from the rectangular sheet. Give your answer correct to the nearest centimetre, okay? So what is this waste here? So how you do that is you get the area of the entire sheet, length by breadth, okay? So it's 16 by 19, okay? We will then get the area of the body of the cylinder. We get the area of one of the circle and we we'll multiply it by two. Then we'll add these three together and we'll take it away. Okay, so let's do that. So, so area of sheet. So it's length by breadth or length by width. What's that? 19 by 16. Three or four, and I can't remember the units, centimeters squared. Okay, area of cylinder, or area of rectangle, we'll call it that. Okay, so I'm gonna call him one, him area two, him area three. Okay, so this is area one. So again, it's a length by width. It's 10 though. Can you see it's 10 by 19? That's 190 centimetres squared. Area of circle is um, pi r squared. So it's pi by three squared. Wasn't it three the, the radius? Yeah. So pi by three squared on my calculator is nine pi. 28.27 centimetres squared. I'm going to multiply that by two because I have two circles. So 18 pi or 56.55 centimetres squared. Okay, so add them together. So I have 190 plus 56.55 plus 190. And it's 246.55 centimetres squared. And we're looking for the waste. So we subtract. So 304, which is this one, minus this one, 246.55. So 304 minus the answer is 57.45 centimetres squared. Give your answer correct to the nearest centimetre again, 57 centimetres squared. Okay, so an area question. Find the volume of a spherical ice cube of radius 1.5 centimetres. Sorry, I took me a minute there to to visualize a spherical ice cube of radius 1.5 centimeters. Give your answer in terms of pi, okay? As long as you use your log tables for area and volume, it's not too bad, okay? So length and area comes on the first two pages and then you have surface area and volume then, okay? So spherical is your, is your sphere, okay? In the following, A represents the curved surface area, V represents the volume. Okay, so let's go back to the question. We want the volume of the sphere. So four over three pi r cubed. Let me just double check that again. So it's a sphere, four over three pi r cubed. And also look out for questions on hemisphere, okay? because it's this one you use again, but it's half of it. Hem hemisphere is half, so it's like that. Okay, so four over three pi r cubed, that is my hemisphere. Okay, so you can see the only dimension you need here is the radius, and that's why they've given it to you in the question. So it's four over three pi 1.5 cubed. And it says, give your answer in terms of pi, okay? So I'm not going to S to D it after this time. I'm going to leave it as pi in the answer. Cubed. 
and I'm getting 9 over 2 pi centimeters cubed for that one. Okay, so that just means I haven't multiplied into 3.14. That's all it means when it's in terms of pi. It's just a more accurate way of leaving it because you don't end up rounding the decimals. Three of these cubes of radius 1.5 are added to a cylinder of internal radius 3.5, which is partially filled with water. All of the ice cubes are completely submerged in the water and the water does not overflow. Find the rise H of the water level. Give your answer correct to one decimal point. Okay, so this is the hardest type question they can really ask or it's one of the hardest ones they, they'll ask on volume. And it's when something changes height. So the theory behind it is when you add in something into your liquid and it rises, it rises by the volume of whatever you added in. Okay, so to explain that, I suppose with an example, you added in three ice cubes. Okay, now we did get the volume of them. Okay, so volume of the three ice cubes equals, so it's 9 over 2 pi by 3, so I'm going to multiply that by 3, and it's 27 over 2 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, so that is volume of the increase. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. When you add these in, the water is going to rise, okay, and it's going to rise by the volume of what you add into it. So it's going to rise by 27 over 2 pi, okay. That's the increase in volume of things in this cylinder, okay. So we have water and now we have ice cubes. So the total volume inside is the volume of the water plus the ice cubes, okay? So that's the extra volume we've added into this cylinder, okay? But how do we work out H, okay? Well, what you do is you come back to the volume of a cylinder, okay? So it's pi r squared H, okay? So volume of a cylinder, is pi r squared h. Okay, now if I just want the rise, okay, I want to know when is the volume of that cylinder equal to 27 over 2 pi, okay? I'm not looking at the volume of the water here at the bottom. I'm just going, I'm just saying you rose up by this amount when I added in this volume, okay? Um, and then you either solve it for H or solve it for R, depending on the question that they ask you, okay? They can only ever ask you to solve it for one of them. And it is normally H, it's normally the rise up. So just to explain that again, okay? You added new volume into it, it rose up by a certain amount, and you're wondering um, by how much. So what did the height increase by when I added in this amount, okay? so. The bigger the canister, the bigger the cylinder, the less it will rise up by because it's it's wider. Okay, think about filling up a bath and dropping, oh, I don't know, dropping an egg into a bath versus dropping an egg into a cup. Okay, it'll have much more effect on rise in a cup because it's got a smaller cylinder. Okay, uh, so we must know the radius of our cylinder somewhere, must have told us. Yeah, 3.5 centimeters. So pi. 3.5 squared by h is equal to 27 over 2 pi. Okay, so I need to solve for h. Okay, so let me work out 3.5 squared by pi. Okay, so I've got a fraction, don't worry about it. 49 over 4 pi times h is equal to 27 over 2 pi. Divide across by the number in front of H. Okay, so on my calendar, and what ends up happening is the pi and the pi cancels. Okay, and 
that's why in many questions questions they tell you to leave it in terms of pi because it'll cancel further down in the question okay now if you saw that great if you didn't don't worry about it because when you put it into your calculator it's going to cancel anyway okay so what i've got here is 54 over 49 or let me decimalize that 1.1 centimeters. So the height rose up by 1.1 centimeters. Okay, so it takes a while to get used of, of, of this, this idea that volume doesn't change. The new volume added to the cylinder dictates the height that it increases by. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keep us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the Level 8 in Electronics and Self-Driving Technologies and from there to the Masters. Check out the link below for more information.